happy to be here with you today. Now I want to take just a moment to revisit 2016. Just a moment. On the Republican side, Trump pushed an agenda of fear and scarcity. It was a divisive politics that dehumanized people by race, religion, gender, country of origin, and more. But Trump also talked about those issues that keep us up at night. Jobs, health care, security. Our endorsed presidential candidate raised the money, had all the right endorsements, and we thought her win was guaranteed. We talked about why voters should reject Trump. This was a strategy, and we lost. We lost because we failed to do one critical thing, to run on our own big ideas. We shouldn't be the party of big money. We should be the party of big ideas. We need to lay out a vision that inspires voters to go out to the polls. That's how we win. When I announced I was running for governor, I knew that a different approach was required. I had to understand why so many Democrats didn't vote. So instead of raising money and in, in going on a speaking tour, I launched a listening tour and I asked my fellow Minnesotans, what are your hopes and dreams for our future and what keeps you up at night? And here's what I heard. In Fridley, a young man said that his student loan payments were $1,800 a month and he's not the only one. How in the world are our young people going to have a chance to build a future with this kind of student debt? We must do better and we can do better. I was driving through a city in greater Minnesota to go to a listening session. I saw storefront after storefront papered over. When I got to the listening session, I said, what's going on? And they said, depopulation. It's causing our schools to consolidate, our Main Street businesses to close, our rural health care providers to close. And Rebecca, when we don't have child care or access to broadband, how in the world are we going to attract young families and businesses back to our communities? We must do better and we can do better. A father in Duluth told me about his three daughters. They have very rare conditions that require very specialized care. But he was sick with worry about what would happen if the ACA was repealed and what that would mean to their lives. We must do better and we can do better. <laughs> then there's Alec the 26-year-old who was no longer able to be on ins his parents' insurance. He couldn't afford insurance, he couldn't afford his insulin, and he rationed it. He passed away alone in his apartment. I heard from an African-American man who's a healthcare worker, and he shared a similar story about his son. Our system is broken, and this should never have happened in the state of Minnesota. We must do better and we can do better. I met a mom up north whose son had suicidal thoughts. They weren't able to locate a bed for him in the community. He was transported to a care facility in North Dakota. Three days later, she received a call at work saying he was being discharged. She had to leave work and drive the long distance. And she worried the whole way about whether he was really ready to come home. We need to build the mental health care system that is there for our fellow Minnesotans when they need it. We must do better and we can do better. Several veterans with PTSD have pleaded with me around the state, including a mother who said that the only way they feel normal is with marijuana. 
and they have begged me to legalize it. And the current medical cannabis program is too expensive and inaccessible. We must do better, and we can do better. A mom in Rochester said her daughter came home from school one day. She's a kindergartner. Rather than sharing a story about what they did, what project they work on, or maybe what they did at recess time, her daughter described an active shooter lockdown drill. And then she said to her mom, Mom, who would want to hurt us? What are we doing to our kids? We must do better, and we can do better! A young African-American man from the metro area shared a story about driving an older, beat-up car. He got pulled over for not wearing his seatbelt, but he was wearing his seatbelt. I've done this before. Oh, so he was asked for his driver's license, and he'd forgotten it that day. I've done the same thing. I would have gotten off with a warning. He got slammed up against the back of his car, cuffed, put in the back of the squad, held in jail. He tried to talk rationally to the officer about his confusion over the situation and his rights. After eight hours, he was finally released. My fellow Minnesotans, we must do better, and we can do better! In addressing institutional racism that holds so many Minnesotans back, lives depend on it that we do something different. We can do better by running on the big ideas that solve problems in people's lives, we can do better by having an agenda that everyone can see themselves in. We can do better with single-payer health care where your health care is no longer tied to your job. So our farmers can focus on growing their food and our small businesses can focus on growing their businesses. The dad in Duluth can focus on helping his daughters grow up to be healthy young adults. Our unions can focus on negotiating wages and benefits. We will be able to make better life decisions, like retire when it's appropriate, or leave that job you never really liked. We will unleash the innovators and attract the innovators. We can do better with a state bank where we refinance student loans where we provide low-interest student loans, where we provide access to capital for our small businesses, and where we support the next generation of family farmers, not factory farms. So we can, we, <laughs> to grow our food locally and protect our clean air and our clean water. We can do better by raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour where we give parents a fighting chance to be home at mealtime with their kids. Be, uh-oh, really? Oh, it's time. <laughs> they can keep a stable roof. They can, our kids need this, that we provide two years tuition free to any child in the state of Minnesota. And that we actually go after climate change. We can tackle it and create 250,000 good paying jobs and improve health outcomes. Now, some people say, oh, Rebecca, isn't that hard? Big change has never been easy. In order to win the governor's race and win back the Minnesota House, we have to run on big ideas that inspire people to go out and vote. As a candidate for governor, my job is to paint a comprehensive vision for our future, one that every Minnesotan can see themselves in. Now, I'm wrapping up. All over the country, progressive women are winning. Serena and I have both broken through glass ceilings personally, professionally, politically. We have the brains, we have the backbones, we have the big ideas, and we can beat Tim Valenti in the fall. Together we can do better and we will do better. Thank you so much.